Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, when we reacting to Jehovah Witness tries to convert an educated Muslim to Christianity. Guys, right, let's get straight into this. A knock on your door, two strange faces with pleasing smiles, requesting a few minutes of your precious time, and in next to no time, they're preaching their faith to you. Sounds familiar, does it? As you see, they use every opportunity to speak and convince others on their beliefs. This being a classic example of a Muslim brother at a gas station, waiting his turn to pump gas, and he hears a lady's voice calling out to him. So I'm at the gas station pumping some gas. Very early and it's very cold out. So as I'm trying to get in my car as the gas is pumping, I hear someone call out, Sir, excuse me. So my first reaction is maybe someone needs some money. And as I turn around, it was a lady. And it didn't look like she needed any money because she had something in her hand and she was, t she was telling me, can I, sh she was asking if she can share this with me and asked me a question. So I figured it out. I said, wow, she has something that she really believes in and she wanted to share it with me. I said, sure, so go ahead. And she asked me a question, it's exactly what's on the cover of this, what's called Watchtower. She said, sir, do you believe, does God care about us? Does God care about you? I said, of course God cares about us. He created us. He feeds us. He provides the air that we breathe. He nurtures us every day. We're alive. We're benefiting from all the blessings that the Creator has given us. Only someone blind in the heart would not be able to see these things. And we went on and on and we spoke. So one of the benefits is that you never know when you're going to be given an opportunity to share, to do the dawah. And you got to be prepared. The Jehovah's Witnesses implement a system commonly referred to as proselytizing, where they visit door to door to talk to people about their faith. Moving on, Many Jehovah's Witnesses preachers who attempt talking to Muslims eventually end up in animated conversations and logical debates. Jehovah's Witnesses are known for their aggressive door-to-door -door evangelism, but many don't know that some are open to learning about other religions. In this video, a Muslim was approached by a Jehovah's Witness recently, and she took the opportunity to teach them about Islam. So we believe there is nobody worthy of more love, more obedience than the one who created you, the one who created me, the one who created trillions of galaxies. So Muslims worship the Creator. And that Muhammad is his final prophet. Some of the key teachings of Islam, such as the six articles. The Jehovah's Witness listened attentively and even asked questions along the way your beliefs was um, and something we have in common uh, our, our understanding of God as the only true God I mean it's something that we write and then his son Jesus, he begets not neither right. is begotten so but then this same God we refrain we call him aggressive of Jehovah has given true Christians a very important assignment so so he said he says that if you love even jesus christ love and obey me if you love and obey me then you do what you know you do what my father asked me to do so so love is not just predicated on just verbal expression of affection when you love someone then you obey that in oh, yeah. right love so, and obedience goes right, together right so that's what we say la ilaha illallah there is nobody so, worthy of more love so, more obedience than the one who created so so that's our religion in a more complex journey a catholic born in an area commonly referred to as the bible belt in the u.s but his entire family converted to jehovah's witness when he was six years old he became a pastor but yet didn't find a solution to all his questions and didn't get the fulfillment he required. He stumbles upon a person, a lady, who seemed all happy and content and realizes she is Muslim and started talking to her. Allah paves the path seamlessly for those who are seekers of the truth. I could not fathom why God would subject my mom to such lifelong punishment. Could not imagine what great sin she must have committed or that we, 
her children must have committed to deserve my father. I didn't have the maturity to sort out such questions, but I had enough fear and anger to provoke them. I was too young to see the wisdom in allowing my father to, I mean my mom, to suffer the violence and abuse of my father. I was too young to understand why God would let innocent children tremble night after night after night in their beds, fearing that they might not see their mother the next morning. I was too young to see how the mercy of God could even extend to my father with all his terrible failings. All I could see in my world was chaos and violence and fear, and so it became easy for me to question the existence of God, and I began to do that at a very early age. A Nigerian brother, a follower of Jehovah's Witness, meets a Muslim brother and is completely bowed over with facts and persistent questioning at various points during the conversation. And if you saw Mary, the mother of Jesus, with her head covered and her loose clothes on walking down the street here in North London, you would think, what religion would you think she was? I would think she's a Muslim. Okay, you think Muslim. All these scientific statements are in the Quran, and there isn't a single statement in the Quran which contradicts modern science. The Quran is 100% scientifically accurate, okay? The Quran is a book which is 1400 years old. It's a book that's easy to memorize. And millions and millions of people have memorized the Quran off by heart, Faris, which means that it's a book that's very difficult to change. If someone tried to change the Quran or produce a new book and change one or two words in it, and it's like the Quran, but in two words difference, people would spot it straight away. Yeah. Because millions of people know the Quran off by heart and they would see it's different and they would say it's not the Quran. Make sense? Yes. Yes, it makes sense. So as a Jehovah's Witness, would you say the Quran must be from God? The Quran must be from God, but at the same time, I've not really gone really deep into um, the comparison between the Bible and the um, Quran. We're but not trying there's to... A big sim there's a lot of similarity, and it's, I'll be honest, yeah, if somebody is to do a research on it, yeah, it's going to take a long time. You can call yourself a Jehovah's Witness, but the reality is, Faris, you're really actually a Muslim and I would suggest look you can go and do more research okay but I feel that God has already guided you you accept the Quran is from God therefore you have to accept that Muhammad peace be upon him is a messenger of God because the Quran says so Ashadu Ashadu An An La ilaha La ilaha Illallah Illallah Wa Wa Ashadu Ashadu Anna Anna Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, wa Rasulahu, wa Rasulahu. In another enlightening story, a Muslim man who married a follower of Jehovah's Witness describes how he allowed his wife to come to Islam when she was prepared and convinced. In what turned out to be a beautiful journey of understanding and compassion, his wife came to Islam six years after their marriage. Essentially after meeting his Muslim parents and family who treated her with love and respect. In all the years they were of different faiths, they had many diverse conversations over the differences and similarities of Islam and Jehovah's Witness. As Islam gains traction and people seek to fulfill the loneliness and discontent within themselves, more and more of them are walking into Islamic centers and masjids. The true word of Allah can never be debated or nullified. And we see from the above mentioned incidents how even Jehovah's Witness followers are eventually attracted to Islam. Hmm. Guys, this is a lot. Well, like, the, 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 the title said Jehovah's Witness tries to convert educated Muslims to Islam. I, I think I watched that video in this clip where they're having a healthy conversation. But what puzzled me was the Nigerian brother who accepted Islam at the spot. Because that's what I was saying in my last video. Because if you, someone like him now, if he's, after saying that, after saying the prayer or the, what was it called? I don't remember. Chill, give me a moment. Oh God, it's not coming. But like, after saying, Ashadu, Ilayla, yes, after saying that, and he reverts. It's, 
somehow because maybe when he goes back to his pastor and his pastor tell him some things, he might say, oh, I'm, I want to provide back to Christianity or I'm still a Christian. I, I, I just said that because I wanted to leave that place. Yeah, I feel it's something that you're supposed to be. It's not something you're supposed to first, but one, it's not something you're supposed to just accept because some people tell you some part of it. I am someone that I feel you get into something you need to know the the perfect side and the bad side. Like you need to know everything about it. Like you need to be sure and certain. So when you know when you're going in for it, you are not coming out. That's why I see some people rushing to marriage because you see this person, you like this person, or oh, we're perfect. You know which like you guys are compatible mentally, physically, like financially, you have to check a lot of things before you just jump into marriage. I think it's, you have to check those kind of things before you jump into any religion. Because I, I see marriage as something that is very, very sacred. The Bible makes us see it like that. There's, only, there's no marriage in heaven. The Bible makes us see that. There's no marriage on heaven. Marriage on this. It's only on earth. So if you get married in the Bible, when you divorce, you're not allowed to be married. So, some Christians that do, that do that, like, does not make sense. Like, I won't say that Christians that are in fact Christians. Yes, I'll keep on saying that. If anyone is not doing what the Bible says they should do, they are in the fast Christian, but are not Christian. It depends, though. It depends. Like, you no know one is perfect. But, like, there are some things you do that it's... It's like there are some people that go against the religion, like against the but they still are the first person. That's what I'm talking about. Because I really know one is perfect, everyone makes a mistake. Yes. So, like this, for instance, for you to combat the religion, it's not something you're just supposed to do when you sleep and wake up. Something you're supposed to do when you are certain. Like you have gone, you you find that this is where I belong, then you take it. I feel that's what I'm waiting for. I haven't seen, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I haven't. Okay, I don't want to think about this. Just to like, just go to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.